Hey, Big Naya, let's do it. Do it. This is this is a good, honest hand of Magic: The Gathering card. Well, I should be playing Magic in Hearthstone. <laughs> Holy crap. Is this Is this about to be the most honest match of modern that's been played in the last 3 months? I feel I feel like there's a non-zero chance that what you're what you're watching on your screen right now could potentially be the most honest match of modern that's been played in a very long time. Maybe the opponent has a combo in there. Maybe, maybe. It's like standard, right? Yeah, buddy. Give me that sweet, sweet basic. Why not fetch there so Knight could hold off Goyf? I didn't fetch because I want the fetch land to make two clues with Tracker. Is the reason. The reason why I waited. You ready for the thunder? Thunder. Whoa, whoa. I should have gotten a green source there, right? That was a punt. This should have gotten a, this should have gotten a forest. Mistakes were made, chat. Do I just slam this next turn? I think I'm supposed to track or make a clue, right? I think I'm supposed to track or make a clue here. Oh. Oh, well, now we definitely have to track or make a clue because uh, we don't actually have a basic f mountain in our deck. Am I bolting this? I feel like I'm not. I feel like I want to save a bolt for their tracker. My scavenging ooze can go to town on their discard pile next turn, making their night worse, which is nice. They don't actually have that much mana in place since they like Ghost Quarter Dose aggressively and they sack their horizon canopy here. So like the fact that we have a mana advantage could be a big deal for us. Hellkite hits for one more point of damage and it actually kills Lingering Souls as opposed to just attacking past them. Have another knight here. Nope, tracker, sure. Sure. Let's just shoot that nerd down. So this deck list is one that I've never played before. You're literally watching our first game of Magic with it, so I have no idea what its matchups are like. Come, come hang out, watch and learn together as we explore the wonderful world of Big Naya.
The deck has no bad matchups and it wins every game. That's what I'm saying. The deck's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Swole Naya. You guys ready for... You guys ready to bring the thunder? Thunder. Whoa, whoa, thunder. Whoa, whoa, thunder. Dee, 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 dee. All right. You got a path to exile or is this bad boy lethal? You got a path to exile or is this bad boy lethal? Those are, those are the modes. Path to exile or lethal dragon. Those are, your, those are your options here, opponent. You either have a path or the dragon's gonna dead you. Whoa, that that activation is aggressive. You have a Gavany Township, yes? I would like to attack you for lethal. Look at him. Look at him. He's coming for you. He's got that thunder in his mouth. He knows what's up. Oh, geez, they, they have main deck even mind sensor. Oh, birds of paradise. That make whoa, Nelly. Whoa, I said what? I said what? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, mm. Um. All right, let's go. Let's get our smushy smushy on here. Modern staple Dromoka's command here. Modern staple Dromoka's command checking in. All right, let's go wide here. They're at six and we have a Kessig Wolf run. Needs more Frample. We have a Bolt too, yeah. So we don't we don't actually have to sneak that much damage in here to kill them. And I got a kitty cat over here. This card was once banned in modern chat. It has to be immensely powerful. They only ban cards in modern that are immensely powerful. Just, just so you're aware. If there was any doubt in your mind about the immense power of our deck, this card was previously banned. Format warp. That's what I'm saying. It is just a just a hot mess. It's warping formats all over. All right, are they dead on board? I feel like they're dead on board. I guess they can make a mana with this knight, technically. I'm definitely supposed to Hulk smash here, right? I'm like, I don't even have to activate the Kessig Wolf run, right? They're just like dead here. Oh, I do have to activate, I, I can bolt them and then they're dead. Pass priority. No, this is that place on Twitch where we play constructed magic. Oh, yeah. Um, we. <laughs> We actually don't have any sideboard cards, do we? I 
This is this is actually this is actually click submit, right? They have worship. Do I bring I bring in Pride Mage in case they have worship? You can just trim these helix. They're kind of expensive and clunky, right? I think eight removal spells is plenty. I could see Nactyl being a little bit medium, especially on the draw. That's true, and Mind Sensor is evasive, which is nice as well, right? So let's just like cut all the ki kitty cats. I, I I know we just had the conversation about this card previously being banned, but I think I think we're obligated to side it out here. I think we're I think we're supposed to trim it. Sand doesn't do anything till turn three. The sand's awesome. I have to imagine that's what Todd Stevens says every time he looks at a value value town hand. He doesn't do anything. It's great. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at that. God bless. <laughs> Todd's great. I meant that in jest. Todd's a good person and a great magic player. You have to be a great magic player to win with a deck like green white. So I got, I just can't stop shitting on the deck. I just can't stop, Chad. It's not, it's not my fault. I just, it's so poop. <laughs> All right, let's jam Knight of the Royal Aquarian in here. Um, let's play Sacred Foundry out, I think. And then next turn, we can go Tracker, Knight for a Fetch Land, get up, grab a Plains. I can't wait for Chapota to have turn three card as Todd goes turn two voice. Yeah, as someone who's been on the other side of that a good deal, I, un I understand the pain. I don't think I want to Hellkite aggressively here. I think I just want to draw a bunch of cards. Believe, believe it or not, I am pretty sure I just want to draw a bunch of cards. So I think I'm actually going to put a stop on my opponent's draw step here. Because I, I want them to draw this Plains potential. Though they're probably going to Knight, right? I'm pretty sure I'm pathing this Knight of the Reliquary. I'm pretty sure I'd rather path Knight. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I just want to, like, kill their threat and have the only, the only threats in play here, ideally. No, in my experience, the little, the little zoo decks are very bad in modern. Do I care if they draw Voice of Resurgence? I don't, right? Like, you can, you can have your Grizzly Bear. Democracy for Black Green Rock. Thank you, Frenzied Mage. I appreciate the bits. They also have decided that they don't want a Grizzly Bear, so they're fetching here. All right, and I don't want them to have a path here. So I'm going to upkeep Path their Knight. Yeah, so I'm going to upkeep Path their Knight here. And if they want a horizon canopy to draw this path to exile, I think I'm okay with that. I don't want them naturally drawing the path to exile for their turn, but I think if they want to use a horizon canopy or just let that happen, sure. I think I think I may okay with that one. All right. It's time for the thunder. 
Are you ready, chat? Are you ready for the thunder? Oh, yeah, because Rising Canopy would shuffle. Yeah, derp. Derp. Got it. They don't have a path here. Holy gosh. Why are they ghost quartering themselves? Oh, they just want to shuffle the top of their deck? And enjoy your Azusa. Such a powerful one, two. So much power. How can I ever possibly win? They've played a one, two, chat. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not a one, two. It's a lot of lands. It's a lot of lands. The company could bury us here. It's a tracker, okay. Um, I think I'm gonna start by cracking a clue here and seeing what we draw. I'm pretty sure I just want to cast this and put this into play. I'm gonna go ahead and smash here. Yeah, not surprised to see that chump happen. Glorybringer's an interesting idea. Someone else brought that up earlier. I could see that. I could see that being 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 decent. God, are they just quartering themselves again here? That's so aggressive. Wow, that's aggro. Bloodbraid's interesting. I'm not sure. Domri's neat because he's card advantage, but I guess Bloodbraid is like similar card advantage, right? Well, if they have three lands on top of their decks, if they have three lands, oh, I could have held up the path in response to the draw. That's interesting. That's interesting. I didn't think about that, uh, Rang. That's an interesting thought. Double Corsair, okay. Okay, they're gonna get to get their thing going here. They're gonna get to gain like six health here. Like, my knights kill them pretty quickly, though. The difference between four and five toughness doesn't really matter, but the difference between, um, the difference between What's the word I'm searching for? Uh, the difference... No, nope, my mouth doesn't want to work. The difference between uh, four points of attack and five points of attack is relevant. And we just smash with everything, right? Just like 10 out of 10. The, the mind sensor could be B-A-N-A-N-A-S. That's what I'm saying. I think... I think that that could definitely be the case here. This shit is bananas. B A N A N A S. Well then. Well then. Well then. Do I let them get to blocks here? I think I let them get to blocks here. Yeah, I think if they don't have like exactly worship here, they're gonna be in trouble. So I wanna keep these paths, potentially shuffle them. 
I'm gonna put a stop on their draw step here. And then I want to path this because it gives them no outs, right? Because I don't want them to be able to play the Horizon Canopy and cycle it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, give them the big Naya beatdown. What's going on, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everyone's having a great Wednesday wherever you're out in the world. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer, memer, content producer here on Twitch. We are playing uh, the Bankskis there in chat, big Naya deck. Um, I stream magic full time here on Twitch. I'm here 30 plus hours a week. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the folks that keep me employed. My subscribers are also the wonderful people that pick out the decks that we play here on this stream. If you're interested in learning how I could play one of your decks on stream, check out bit.ly forward slash Hoogle sellout. You can also poke into the donation queue there and see what other decks we have coming up. Um, you can also support my stuff by checking out some of my wonderful sponsors, MTGO, mtgotraders.com would love to buy and sell magic online cards with you and if you use code hoagland paypal at checkout with them you'll save eight percent on your singles orders there coolstuffinc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff including ccg singles using promo code jeff5 you can save five percent on magic pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them inkedgaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience using code jeff12 you can save 12 percent on custom play mats mouse pads binders and bags there and of course myself and the wonderful moderator staff would like to welcome everyone to Hoaglandia. Please talk to your friendly neighborhood moderator about your complimentary timeout. And just like that, just like that, I love how people, there was an obnoxious person in chat there that complained about, about an ad break. I was literally waiting for the match of magic to pop. So like, if I wasn't showing that screen, it would literally just be waiting there, waiting for a wheel to spin. And it's always, it's always the, the leeches, the freeloaders, the people that aren't subs that complain, that complain about the ad breaks, but whatever, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just remove them and move on with our lives. We're 1-0 after beating Green White Value Town, heading on into our second match here. Good honest beat down hand here. Get our old fetch stooping ground wild in the cuddle. Obviously, you primarily work with the magic subsection on Twitch, but in your opinion, is the streaming market overall getting too saturated to join slash startup now? It is very difficult to get started as a new streamer in an established game. And that's that's not even just magic. That's that's all that's all established games. It is most people when they when they watch Twitch, they don't scroll past the first few people that are streaming. So unless you have you have a connection or a deal or something set up with someone who's an established streamer in an existing game, it's very hard to break into a new game on Twitch. That that's not even good enough, Bastion Son. You can't you can't even just be good at what you do because you just literally can't get noticed most of the time. You literally, you literally can't get noticed because people don't scroll that far. People, people don't look that far down. Yeah, I am the top hex streamer when I stream. Yeah, hex is hex is a very small game. I think if you use the web browser, you can use your Prime on mobile. This link definitely works for subscribing on mobile. I'm not sure if it lets you use the Prime or not. We'll see if they have a Terminator or something here, or just a Fatal Push. I wanted to attack before I played the Scavenging Goose out because I didn't want them to know I could potentially have a better threat here. I'm just going to shock this in and cast the Scavenging Goose at this point. Bank can't did a lot of damage. They each got in for three. This one ate a removal spell. No one else is salty enough. 
<laughs> you should watch Cryptarian stream sometimes. I've got, I could, I could only dream of aspiring to the amount of salt that that guy produces. Oh, am I getting Culligan's commanded here? This was bad. I should have. This, this was a bad line. I'm getting Culligan's commanded here. Yeah, that was that was a bad line on my part. All right, drawing the five drop after we cycle a land feels a little bit bad. Man, losing that scavenging is a big deal. That that could that's probably gonna cost me this game. The sandwich guy put broccoli rob instead of lettuce on my turkey club. I try to find someone with zero one viewers go in their chat and start long rambling with whatever they're actually usually placed. So they want to be nice because hey a viewer, but it's not a <laughs> That's kind of cruel goose. Alright, so I think our line to win this game at this point is just like bolt upstairs here into like Thunder Daddy for the last five. Pretty sure that's the line. Just like jam this, play this tap land, and then like hope to rip a land next turn and kill them. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the people that stream, especially non non card games, like there isn't a lot of time when you're playing a first person shooter to really get into the depth and the strategy without being really distracted from playing the game. Land, land, land. I guess that's like kind of a land, right? So they're obligated to block here. See if they have a bolt or a fatal push here. They could have a bolt. Yeah, they're gonna bolt my dome. Or they're gonna bolt, they're gonna bolt the goif and then delete it. It's not even just about the number of the number of people that you have in chat that lets magic streamers be more interactive. It's the, the pacing of the game gives you more time to be more interactive too. There's, there's a lot of downtime and waiting when you're playing magic, even compared to other card games, and especially compared to something like a first person shooter. Thunder. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys ready to bring the thunder? You ready to bring the thunder, chat? Ready to bring the thunder? Ready to bring the thunder? We are going to play the card list. I'm going to run back card for card the card list we played last time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You ready to taste my dragon? You ready to taste my dragon? My dragon is here and he is, he is hangry, opponent. He is coming for you. Coming, coming for the health total. Ready to, ready to ride the wave? Ready to ride the wave, the big dragon wave? I bet they thought, I bet they thought they were stabilizing here too. But they didn't know the thunder was coming. I guess I did it on mobile. Retrop, thanks for fumbling around and resubbing on mobile. Thank you for sending your Amazon Prime this way again this month. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. All right. Um, concession. I feel like we're going to get a lot of concession dragons today. Do I board in Torpor Orb? Is is this a card that's supposed to be in my deck? Is is this a card I want in my deck? I feel like it might be, right? This sideboard is very specific. The sideboard is very, very focused. On, I like that suggestion, Burgo. A couple of outs to bridge. Should I just bring in Quasley Pride Mage? It's like trim. I kind of, um, Cat's actually pretty good here, I think. I think bringing in a couple of Pride Mage to hedge bridge seems fine. What do I, what do I want to trim here? What do I want to trim here? 
The sideboard is very, very targeted at, at decks that are very linear. Pride Man hits worship and Blood Moon too. Yeah, that's true. What am I? What am I cutting? Is it Noble Hierarch? Is it? Is it nuts? Domri could be medium. I could see that. Like they go pretty wide. Yeah, I like that. I think I like trimming that. I think the the big problem. You think Path is that bad? I think I need to kill. I think I need to kill their stuff. I guess I have six. I guess Domri kills their Pyromancers a lot of the time. I don't know. Kicking Bedlam out of the way seems reasonable. Well, so what a... The definition of a linear deck as it refers to a TCG is a deck that's just not looking to interact with its opponent. In general, a deck that is linear is only looking to interact on the axis of anti-interaction. They're only looking to impact the opponent's cards if the opponent's cards are making their life difficult. And in general, you're going to board differently against different styles of linear decks. So like, a not all linear decks are weak against the same things. This is a keep. I think I'm gonna keep this. Let's just draw some lands. Ding. Ding. Never forget chat. If your options are being lucky and being good, always choose being lucky. I have no idea, Davis. I think some of them are serious and some of them are memes. It's probably a healthy mix of the two. Ideally, you should be both, but if you're obligated to choose only one, lucky is better. This Pyromancer could run away with the game here. This Pyromancer could very quickly run away with the game. Lantern and Valakut are both fine magic decks. Both fine fine decks in modern both very very reasonable magic the gathering decks yeah turn to turn to dr pz here while well, we don't have uh we don't have a way to interact feels real bad Yeah, that's true. Bingo. Bingo has definitely created a society of people trying to bait me into doing things. Well, that's great. Um, I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to play this and attack for five here. No, I think I'd rather take PZ off the table than eat the souls. Like, I, I have Thunder Daddy here to, like, clean up the souls down the line, so... I think uh, killing Dr. PZ and potentially more ground pounders should be my priority for sure. What a tilt. What a tilt! I lose Thunder Daddy and they get to flash back the souls. It's like cheating. Why are they cheating? They're so good. They're so good. What are you doing that costs three mana? It's, uh, it's a Culligan's Command. Like shock my thing. Oh, they rebought Pyro. Okay, sure. Weird. I mean, we eventually weed out most of the obnoxious people. And you get the baiting bingo square. That's true. That's true. All right, there's Dr. PZ. They have a way to kill my scoos here. Scoos down. Scoos down. Scoos down. 
Helix was an amazing pickup here. Bath is also not bad. They have a Terminator Fatal Push here. Sweet. All right. Well, we're ahead in this race by a good, good margin. I guess they can, uh, they can Bedlam us next turn. This knight is a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. So this should this should bait some removal if they have it all. Honestly, this should just bait some removal if they have it. Stone, nothing. Building building spell hunter. I don't know what it does for two my sides, Rexar. I know it's silly, but you have there th those are the reasons to play the deck, Zach. You should you should build a different hunter deck. Like like two to my side and Rolkthar are literally the payoffs for not playing minions. So you should just like put some minions in your deck and build build kind of a mid-range hunter deck. Spell, Spell Hunter is just one of those decks where there really aren't budget choices for it. Yeah, Rexar is also just like one of the better cards in the deck too. So I assume I'm losing my path here. Let's see if they have a Fatal Push. Green source is a good pickup here because it means I can play the scavenging ooze and get it out of bolt range here thanks to my Knight of the Reliquary. There's one creature over there and there's one, two, three, plenty of creatures in my bin. I'm going to attack with Dharma Goofy. They have bolt this feels kind of bad. Just a bump there, that makes sense. No, Moto's, Moto's running like a slideshow again already. Probably kick it after this match. I wonder if some of it's server side today. Because Vintage Cube went up, right? Which usually means the servers the servers run slower when there's more things going on for them. Like, I feel like some of the time it's fine. I feel like it's randomly slowing up. It's like, usually it takes longer than this for it to slow to the crawl because of the memory leak. Well, thank you, Waldos. I appreciate the upgrade. I can get your complimentary timeout. I don't think it gives you a notification when you just upgrade the sub mid cycle. I just want a Kessig Wolf run here, right? Fingers, fingers crossed. Their last card's not Bedlam Reveler. It's always Bedlam Reveler. Uh, the disc icon is a silver coin. It's a custom bit badge. We're adding custom bit badges to the channel. So if you if you mouse over it, you can see what they mean. It might have been right to just get more green sources. I have no idea. I think trying to predict what Wizards of the Coast is going to do with their digital offerings is a lot like trying to predict what they're going to do with their ban lists. Just like an exercise in banging your head against a wall.
going to be all she wrote for this one. I think I agree with Burgle that the dummy rods are probably okay. Okay, I agree. The paths are like, they're fine. But like Domri is like similar removal while also being offering some card advantage. I think the sand's fine on the play. We get to cast anything we draw. I'm sure we'll never draw another spell, but Goyf and the Knight's a pretty decent curve. Rats. Never draw a spell on point. Good, good news. Future discard spells from the opponent, no longer useful. We are discard, discard immune. When I said I was never going to draw a spell, I, I was hoping I was being sarcastic. At least we get to start using Kessig Wolf Run next turn. At least we get to start using Kessig Wolf Run next turn, chat. So they can't jump, blo jump block our Termagoosey. Yep. As long as they don't have removal for this, we're like not in a terrible spot. All right. I think just Kessigging here is better than like burning the bolt. But keeping the bolt in hand feels a little bit bad if they have like fatal push here. Oh, they have a lightning bolt. Wait, there's not an instant in the graveyard, right? So they're just about to get really fucked. Yeah, boy! Welcome to Tarmogoyf! Getcha! <laughs> always check, always check the Tarmogoyf die, chat. Always check the Tarmogoyf die. So you're saying, no, oh, 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 thunder daddy, thunder daddy, thunder, come on, bring the thunder, bring the thunder, magic online, that is not the thunder, that is the quasi pride mage, needed, needed some thunder, got some cat, <laughs> is this, is this, does this a thunder cat, I asked for thunder and we got a cat, is that, am I supposed to assume that Magic Online thinks this is a Thundercat? It's the, only, it's the only thing that makes sense to me. No, I don't play Standard. Or, lots of people that play lots of Standard on their streams. We pretty much focus on non-rotating formats here. This is a, a bastion of Modern and Legacy in a field full of Cube and Standard. In a world full of Cube and Standard, Hogland plays... Modern. I don't think I'm supposed to bolt the Chandra. I think I'm supposed to hold the bolt for a second here. Well, the two the two spells we've drawn this game have been pretty good. And by pretty good I mean the Quasly Pride Mage was bad. That's that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes, chat. Remember, magic has variance by design. It's a feature, it's not a bug. God, how good would Tracker be, right? I think Tracker's probably too slow at this point. I think we probably need a Tracker like last turn. Huh. 
<laughs> Didn't, I wasn't sure how the, the, the Dom Remoto interface worked there for a second. I was like, uh, how do you, how do you work? No, I don't, I don't read Discord or check my whispers or Twitter or stuff. I pr pretty much the only social media stuff I do midstream is I, is I, uh, is I post to Twitter when we're changing decks. There's just too much going on to be like trying to keep up with social media stuff while I'm streaming. Yep. <sighs> I think we're dead at this point. We'll take another draw step here. Them's the beats, chat. Them's the beats. Onward, upward, backward, forward. Heading into our third match here. We're one on one now after a little bit of. A little bit of flood and die there against Mardu. I kept kept a little bit of a land heavy hand, but definitely ran a bit below the curve after that for sure too. I think I think that seven was keepable. I think I'd keep that seven again. I think two drop into three drop on the play with the utility land is very reasonable. You just needed to hope to draw more than one third spells. Uh, most Mardu lists aren't playing any Liliana the Veil anymore. She's not particularly well positioned in the format. A lot of the creature decks have lots of things to go wide around her, and she's kind of, you don't always have a ton of things to discard extra. Uh, this, to, this deck is a very, very bad, very bad Tarmogoyf deck. This deck's a good example of, like, Tarmogoyf being... This, this deck embodies what I think R&D thought Tarmogoyf was going to be when they printed it because like without sorcery speed discard to like pump your charmer grave stats very quickly it's a pretty medium creature okay them playing serum visions here is actually pretty good for us because it means if they're on a jeskai deck they can't lightning bolt goif anymore by modern standards this is a big zoo deck our curve goes up to five dows I think having a bunch of threes and fours and fives qualifies as big in this format. I'm going to meet myself, eat some granola here really quick. Getting a little hungry. My mind was with the rest of chat here, and it felt like this was bring to lightscape shift, but this definitely means it is not bring to lightscape shift. This is not this is not a piece of ramp that they would be playing. Could they be playing like a like ad nauseum deck maybe? Silence and Pentad Prism definitely scream combo of some sort.
Could it be like a bring to light ad nauseum deck? Uh, yeah. Give me that, that sweet, sweet lethal Kessig. Give me that. Give me that sweet, sweet lethal Kessig. Uh, yeah, pump up the jam. Pump up the pump up the pump up the jam. Pump up the pump up the pump up the jam. Yeah, good, honest, two and three power Tarmogoyf beatdown. I have no idea what's going on on the other side. Should I board in Damping Sphere? I feel like I should board in Damping Sphere. I feel like I should board these cards in. These Path to Exiles are probably rancid. These helixes and these bolts are probably like just reach. I'm gonna reserve the right to like say Damping Sphere was bad and we shouldn't have boarded it in later, but I, I feel like, I feel like the opportunity cost is low. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, I mean, I'm trimming removal. Do I want Mind Sensor? They could be a bring to light deck. I think I'm just gonna bring in all of this hate and just like hope that some of it is catches whatever they're doing. Like what what big thing are they ramping into? Because they're obviously ramping into something big, right? I want a Noble on one or Nactal on one? I think I want a Noble on one, especially with that draw. The IHOP change seems like an awesome PR move on IHOP's part because all of the sudden, Infinite people who have haven't given a shit about IHOP in a million years are talking about IHOP. That's for modern. That's for modern. I'm just going to grudge this Pentad Prism. We still don't know what the opponent's doing. It's a sweeper, sure. Razor Verge Thicket is kinda, kinda giving, kinda punishing me here because I can't double spell this turn. Guess I'm playing this in passing. It's, uh, it's probably TMI, Panda. Wild Nactal is on the ban list because the ban list in modern is consistent and fair. There's no there's no inconsistencies to be had. Please let this damping sphere have text. Please let this damping sphere have text. Another anger, yep. We have no idea what they're doing. They just kind of died game one. We are one and one. We beat uh, green, white, unplayables, and we lost uh, to Marty Pyromancer. It could just be a five color control deck. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a possibility. Well, 
Well, no, they have, they showed us, for people that are just joining us and missed game one, they, they have Farseek and Pentad Prism and Serum Visions in their deck. The record command is almost always wrong. So it's easier for me to just say it and rather than, that way I don't have to explain that it's wrong. And yeah, they showed us Silence too. Like Silence feels like the tip off that they're probably playing a combo deck to me, but I definitely don't know that for sure. Silence, Silence is the card that says to me, I'm probably playing Blood Moon. My opponent's probably playing Blood Moon. Modern is, it's always the right time for brewing in Modern. That's why Modern's the most popular format Magic the Gathering has. Most popular competitive format Magic the Gathering has. Uh, so they're dead, right? I go to one, I sacrifice my lands and keep my Knight of the Reliquary. Hey, look, Damping Sphere did something. Look at that, Damping Sphere did something. Mom, spaghetti, knees weak, arms are heavy, vomit on my sweater already, but I keep on forgetting what I wrote down. The whole cloud rolls so loud. I open my mouth, but the words won't come out. He's hoping now. Everybody's choking now. Let's go. Let's get him. Mom's spaghetti was not good enough. Too much, too much honest Naya stuff on the other side of the table. Too much honest Naya stuff. What's going on, Josh? Thank you for the two-month resubscription. Welcome, welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. Thanks for keeping me employed here. The cheese stands alone. Wet ball lethal. I was hoping the damping sphere would do something, and little did we know, in the end, in the end, the wet ball would do it all. Praise be to the dampest of balls. Thanks, fangirl. I appreciate it. All right. Want to die roll? That's good for our good, honest deck. That seems fine. It's a little bit mana heavy, but our fetch lands turn into clues with our, with our candy man here. The candy man can do 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 The question will be based on their first turn play, will we want to play tireless tracker on two or will we want to hold her until until turn four so we can play her and then make a clue afterwards? Valakut or burn? Valakut. All right. Hey, Tim from England with the brand new Twitch Prime support. And there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with your Twitch Prime. Welcome. All right. Well, second, second tracker makes this choice really easy. Didum, 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 Steve O. We actually have a pretty quick clock here. The opponent's deck is definitely, again, like all of these sweet kind of mid rangey aggressive decks, they're just very bad against Red Green Valakut. Red Green Valakut is, is good against everything that can't consistently put lethal into play by turn three to four. And this deck isn't killing people till turn probably in the five to seven range. So we're, we are just a little bit slow in this matchup in general. No, I think I just want to get more, more dorks into play so I can kill them faster. Like I don't, I don't think we're in a position where they have double, I don't think when they have double ramp spell that we were in a position to be able to beat them if they have a sweep or two. give you free money. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to drop your fun bucks this way, Tim. I'm glad you enjoy the YouTube stuff. Welcome to a live one. Me 
maybe Corcoran Iron Pages is, is really pretty expensive. And this deck, again, like, this deck has 10 removal spells in the main deck. We have four paths, four bolts, and two lightning helixes. So we're really a more interactive zoo deck. Like I said, this is, I labeled the deck Big Naya because it's it's a deck that's not trying to kill on turn three and turn four. This is a deck that's looking to interact with the opposing board a little bit through removal spells and then eventually kill in a slightly longer game. Mind Sensor out of the board will be fine. I don't think, I don't think it's going to swing the pendulum heavily in our favor but it'll be it'll be passable to say the least all right i mean don't tighten me bro okay dead escape shift yep If any of you out there ever meet a red green titan player who doesn't have it, get their autograph because they're a rare breed. They're a rare breed. For those of you that aren't familiar with scape shift math, scape shift when your opponent has scape shift on seven lands deals 18 damage and scape shift on uh, eight lands deals 36 points of damage. Um, yep. I'm actually going to bring in Quasily Pride Mage here over these other Path to Exiles because I just want things that attack. You once saw a truck or not have Karn on three. Was their deck broken? Was it a Moto League? Did they, did they, that was a Moto League you can file for a refund, right? I guess Torp Orb is fine. Yep, I'd buy that for a dollar. Now, Orb for Titan seems, seems reasonable. But it turns off our Thunder Maw trigger. It's written in a contract that they must have somewhere. Maybe they'll make Steve fly. Yeah, it could be okay versus random balls too. That's true. All right. If we, if any of the hands in this deck have a chance to win this matchup, this is definitely it, right? We've got turn one noble into turn two double dork, and hopefully we're going to be able to run them down. That's impressive, wannabe beetle. That's, that's impressive. We do, we do, unfortunately, have Yu-Gi-Oh! chokes. I'm just supposed to go Goyf Nacked, all right? I guess the, the Goyf's not even that good. Yeah, I'm just going to play the Knight. Let's get the Knight going. Um, no, I would have called it 8 Whack most likely. I don't know that we've played 8 Whack on stream, actually. It's def there's definitely a copy of 8 Whack in the donation queue, but I don't remember playing it in recent memory. Hey, $5 for each of the Ranker top decks yesterday. Thanks. Thanks, Ocean Dodo. I appreciate the support. Uh, if there's any decks in the queue that you'd like to bump up with that $10 donation, let me know. As always, the people that support my content here with, uh, with bits and donations pick uh, how quickly we play which decks. Sounds good, will do. I think I just play my other knight here. And then I'm gonna knight my stomping ground here. And play the Nactyl. Uh, they had seven lands when I conceded Amethy. Yep, 
Yeah, toolbox techs are sweet. Oh god, are they gonna miss a land drop? They just do I get post post tribe elder? Steve is so good. Rampant growth shouldn't gain you five health. It's so unfair. It's so unfair. Why does why does rampant growth gain them six? It's completely unreasonable. Uh, Mardu Pyromancer is great. We 4 one with it pretty easily. I think that deck's very powerful. One of the better decks in Modern right now based on, based on number of finishes too. All right, so they're going to 14 here. Can I kill them through a Titan next turn? I don't think so. Yeah, maybe actually, because this will be six and this will be eight. So I actually have lethal through a Titan next turn, which is nice. Although I guess the Titan can get mountain since they already have a Valakut and shoot down some of my stuff. Sweeper here. What else? Okay, another rampant growth that gains six health. Yep. What do you think is the best tracker deck in modern right now? Um, I'm I'm really a big fan of green black mid range. We built Jund with four tireless trackers in it as well, and that felt pretty good. Oh, Wolf Run, huh? I feel like we just smashed them. I feel like we're just supposed to smash them because like them blocking and like not using. Them blocking is like us not using the the Knight of the Reliquary and then oh geez. So they can they can shoot our tracker here. Yeah, I have I permanently banned that person, Cletus. People people that are looking to put people down based on where they're playing magic or how they playing magic just aren't welcome here. Those, those people are just like looking to crap on other people's experience to make themselves feel smart. I'm just, I don't want those type of people in my community. If they have a two mana ramp spell here too, they could kill the wild Nakadal as well. Which, and this is one of the reasons why the red green Valka deck is so powerful. Cause like, yeah, like they're gonna mow down our board here and like they don't even have one of their, their really strong payoffs. They just like drew a Valakut, so they're kind of killing us. Bring on the thunder, Banksy with the two month three sub. Thank you very much. Is that lethal? God, that's one off of lethal, fuck. It's one off of lethal. Oh, if the clue draws a fetch land. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We have a lot of fetch lands. All right. I'm going to do this. Smush him. Hope to dodge. Hope to dodge Titan and Scape Shift. That was, a good, that was a good line. Thank you for pointing that out. Because fetch land was lethal there. Sure. I would have to look up what some of those cards do, Amethy. <laughs> I don't agree to play things without without knowing what they do first. Yeah, if they have nothing, they're dead here. I'm sorry. I'm so confused. What a, huh, are you? Are you a red green player that doesn't have an opponent? I feel like your deck broken. I feel like you should request a refund. All right, all right. I think we're gonna run it back here. I think we just run it back. Ankrix's Death Shadow is one of the many fine tier two decks in modern. 
It's no longer the best deck in the format, but it's still competitive. It still has very powerful, reasonable draws. Get their autograph. Whoa, they only they only missed having it in one game here, Chad. That's that's why we play best of three, so that way they could have it in the next game. This is a pretty easy mulligan, right? I feel like I'm supposed to mulligan for my noble hierarchs or my wild in the cuddles here, especially especially just going to six. Is this good enough? I think the best decks in modern right now are humans and hollowed one, and everything else is varying degrees worse than those. There's lots, there's lots of things that are playable. Yeah, I'm on the draw with a scry here, so I can try for a one drop. I'm gonna bottom it on one drop here. Nactyl. Ooh, ooh, interaction. Ooh, ooh, peace of mind, sensor shaped candy. So like the thing to remember about Grixis Death Shadow is that my comments about what make good decks and modern good in general apply to Grixis Death Shadow. Grixis Death Shadow, while it has a lot of pieces of interaction in it, it is a often a linear deck that can kill its opponent on the third or fourth turn of the game. It is very difficult for any deck to be truly bad in modern, in my opinion, if it can linear have a linear kill you by turn by turn three or four draw. Because that means even when you have matchups that are truly bad, sometimes you just kill them. Sometimes you're just like, boop, boop, kill you, and it didn't matter that your matchup was bad. Yeah, like Scred won a Grand Prix, right? Just like, you can, you can kill all the time. The turn three kill is not that difficult. It just requires like a bunch of Street Wraiths and a couple of Death Shadows, or Team or Battle Rage. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah it's, that's good context. Put put two Battle Rages in your Death Shadow deck. Please, please, and thank you. Th you can thank me later. If you want to send me a consulting fee, that's that's fine. Put put two Battle Rages in your Grixis Shadow deck. It is it is silly not to play two. I think Merfolk is really shitty humans. It just like does very similar things to humans, but is much worse on the disruptive front. Every, every time you're, as someone who's played against Shadow a lot, the thing you're always saying to yourself is, well, I hope they don't have Teamer Battle Rage here because I can't beat that card. And then they have the Teamer Battle Rage and you die. Like, Teamer Battle Rage is very, very good in that deck. All right, well, our 2-1, our 2-1 ate a fat one and died. So, look at that. That's a 4-5 Tarmagoofy. I tapped my lands wrong, chat. Should have left the lightning bolt up. I'm aware. I'm aware mistakes were made. It's fine. Our opponent's going to kill us with Scape Shift or Primeval Titan next turn anyways. But I did tap my lands wrong here. It's as big as it gets. Holy gosh. Do they have nothing? Oh, it's time to bring the thunder, chat. Are you ready to bring the thunder? Are you ready to bring the thunder? Thunder, whoa, whoa, thunder. The reason to not respond to scape shift with, with the mind sensor is I need to kill my opponent. And if my opponent has a lightning bolt now, they're gonna have a lightning bolt when they cast scape shift. They're not, they're not gonna cast scape shift with, with, uh, without having red up. All right. All right, here's the thunder. We just need him to brick for a turn. You need him to brick for another turn or two. How unlucky are you, opponent? Are you the most unlucky red green Valakut player in the history of modern? You'd have to be to not kill me here. I would appreciate it if you were, but it definitely would be very fortunate for me. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Can you feel the dragon? The dragon's coming for you. The dragon is coming for you. Feel the dragon, baby. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
Oh no! They've drawn 16 cards, chat. Here comes the scape shift. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Like I said, not not expecting to win this matchup. This matchup is very, very bad for a deck. I think uh we're just if you can't if you can't kill your opponent by turn four, you're just not gonna have a good matchup against Red Green Valakut. Okay, but here's the thing, Zane Quinn. The only reason they cast Scape Shift without having Red Up was because I cast Thunder Maw Hellkite to pressure them. If I didn't cast the Thunder Maw Hellkite, they don't have a reason to go for it there, which means they don't play into the Mind Sensor without having Lightning Bolt up. No, I, I, I know you were probably joking, but it's worth, it's worth bringing up because there's going to be someone else in chat that doesn't, or watch the video in the future, that doesn't understand how, how applicable that is, right? Because it is very easy to see... Or easy to. I don't have experience playing Mardu against Scape Shift, so I don't know if it's good, bad, or otherwise. If no, not a clue, not a clue. Art Noble Hierarch artwork optional. Optional artwork Noble Hierarch. That's fine, Magic Online. I didn't want to. I didn't want to look at the pretty picture, anyways. Joke's on you. No, the Pentad Prism deck was a. Uh, it was a Through the Breach deck, actually. Humans! Red Source. Alright, alright. Cooking with gas, Jack. Cooking with gas. Deft fangirl with the brand new Twitch Prime support. Thank you very much and welcome. I appreciate appreciate the support. Thanks for helping keep me employed here. Ooh. And Gamula Titan's great. We played it on stream pretty recently. We played it a few times on stream. You find a bunch of bunch of videos of it on the YouTube channel at this point. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely check this off as a moto bug. Ten out of ten. You know, it's funny. I always assumed that the picture not loading on cards like this was a wine issue because I'm playing on Linux, but the artwork is definitely fucked up on Windows too. So just a moto thing. Wine is good software. MTG mailing with the brand new Twitch Prime Sport. Thank you very much and welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay, just blast that off and smash them for five here. No, that's a that's a judge promo. In paper, I believe it's a judge promo. Yep, good. Just making sure that did what I thought it did. Boop. Boop, 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 you're right on the nose. Moto, Moto, Moto desperately needs a restart. Moto, Moto desperately needs. I might, I might restart mid, mid game. This is pretty bad. Yeah, we, we should have enough time in this match. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill this and reload it here. I don't know why it's locking up so much today. I don't know if it's on my end or if it's on the server side. I don't have. I don't have anything else going on. I don't know if it's vintage cube related or not from server. <laughs> Magic in slow motion is not good content. Let's let's give it a re-kick here so it'll be good for a few matches at least. It does it does leak memory, but usually it's like we get five to ten matches at least before before it gets bad. Oh, we coming too? All right, and we're back. Guess who's back? Back again. Shady's back. Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Do 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 do. Attack with both of these. Seems a little bit better. Maybe. Hopefully. Possibly.
Needs a rising canopy has been on Team Hog Land so far. It's great. It's a Reflector Mage. Reflector Mage is the card they need. Okay. I guess we're kind of in a spot to be losing this race now, huh? If they have another Reflector Mage, we could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you definitely should have called a judge. The, here's 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 the short answer for people that are new to competitive magic. If 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 you ever think to yourself, should I call a judge? The answer to the question is always yes. Always yes, 100% of the time. The judges are there to help. And if there's ever any confusion or any moment of lack of clarity in your game, call for a judge. The judges are there to make sure the games get played appropriately and in the correct manner. Alrighty, well there's Well there's the there's the there's the there's the quick ban there. Alright. Check out my ranting videos on YouTube for my giant middle fingers to players who want to accuse players of making mistakes on camera as uh as cheating and stuff like that. I that was a permanent ban. Those people can just get right the fuck on out of here. This is probably gonna name scavenging news, I'd assume. Do you know who the people that don't have mistakes caught on camera at some point in their career? People that haven't played on camera. Magic, magic is a very compli- Wait, wait, what? What just happened? The, the other idea is the fact that, um, the other idea is the fact that like people, people think that if you're playing on camera at a tournament that automatically makes you a professional magic player. That couldn't be further from the truth. Like, a lot of the people that are playing Magic at random Magic tournaments are just random people like you and me that are interested in just playing Magic the Gathering, and they're out They're out to play for the weekend. A majority of people that play in Grand Prix and Opens are people that drove from within four or five hours to play in a large Magic tournament. Like... We, we literally have, have players like miss discarding to their heads and can't attack with it in the top, the top fours and top eights of Pro Tours, right? Like there's a lot going on in Magic and it doesn't matter if you did the same thing correct 800 times before when you're in a different situation and you're worrying about different things, it's possible to mess that thing up the hundredth time you do it. I've shuffled a deck of cards thousands of times. Sometimes I still fumble and drop a card on the table or the floor by mistake. I don't mean to do that, but I'm human and my hands are awkward. So that shit happens occasionally. I don't think Orb makes it a snap keep. I think no, no play that impacts the board till turn three is not good enough. Perfect. This, uh, this five is actually very good, especially with the land on top. Correct. That's how that's how every tournament is, right? Like there isn't there isn't a professional magic player paired into another professional magic player every round of every tournament. No, I think Ashiok's pretty bad in modern. Oh, well, my opponent also mulliganed very low. Well, that's good for us. We drew another land off. God bless. The problem with Ashiok in modern is it's a planeswalker that doesn't generate card advantage for a minimum of two turns, and it can't impact the board generally very quickly. All right. Well. Opponent mulliganed. We both mulliganed, but opponent uh, fumbled out of it and died there. So we ended up on the 3-2 with the big Naya deck. Um, I think those matches ab went about as I would expect them to go for this archetype. What did we? We lost to we lost to Mardu Pyromancer when we flooded out pretty badly. And we lost to... Um, we lost to uh, Red Green Valakut. I think if I was going to play this deck again in the future, I would think a little bit more about the sideboard and figure out exactly which specific hate cards this deck wanted to play. I felt like I didn't really have good cards to sideboard in against the fair decks we played against, and I kind of think I wouldn't mind having 
two to four cards that could like generate additional card advantage past tireless tracker or be extra spot removal against aggressive decks so while i think having a lot of permanent based hate in the sideboard is good for a deck like this because you're going to be a bit of a dog to something like uh bit of a dog to something like uh a storm i do think having a few cards at least for fair decks would be ideal like maybe maybe these chokes could turn into some card advantage or something like that uh, i don't currently have any opens on my schedule traveling traveling to play in magic tournaments is very expensive and time consuming i'd much rather spend my magic time streaming all right speaking speaking of magic time streaming we have at least one more deck today and this next one this next one is a hoot all right i'm sure i'm sure you're familiar with goblin charbelcher in one of magic's older formats are you familiar with goblin charbelcher in modern however this deck 